part of section 3.2 was solving um, the equation AV equals lambda V. And when you solve that equation, what is lambda called? Eigenvalue. And what is the vector V called in that equation? Eigenvector. Um, that's fine. Did your book call it a solution vector? No, did your book call it a solution vector? I don't have a book with me either. If your book did, then it's okay, but I don't think they did. <laughs> okay, so how do you find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix? AD minus BC. Yep, so the determinant of a, mat of a 2 by 2 matrix in this case would be 1 times 4 minus 2 times 3, which is negative 2. Okay. 3, 2. All right, so last class we were working on this system of equations, system of differential equations that's linear. Um, y prime is the matrix 2, 3, 0, negative 4 times y. And just to remind us of the notation, a bold y prime, that's a vector that's really an x prime and a y prime, right? And a bold y is really a vector that's an x and a y. And then this is a matrix notation for a system, right? I could add one more thing to this string. Another way to write this would be to say x prime equals and y prime equals and write it as two separate equations. Right, what would my x prime equation be? 2x plus 3y, yep, and 0x minus 4y, which is just negative 4y, yeah. Good. All right, so hopefully this is becoming more natural. Um, if you took linear, it's probably sinking in a little faster. Um, again, don't feel like you shouldn't change the notation. If it's written in a way that you're like, that just doesn't, you know, jive, yeah, just change it. Just put it in one that makes more sense to you. Okay, so this system, we studied in depth last class. We spent a lot of time doing this, working on this. I, I gave you magically two solutions. I asked you to check, are these things solutions? And it turned out that those two solutions I gave you were this one and this one. They were straight line solutions. <clears throat> so we're going to discuss today how to find those analytically, how to find the straight line solutions. So I had to give it to you by magic last class. All right. So if we go back and think about how to create a vector field for a system of ODEs, remember you choose some points. You would just pick some points in the plane x, y. And then you'd plug the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate into your system of ODEs. You would just go back up here, and you'd plug in a value for x and y into these two equations, and you'd end up with an x prime and a y prime. And the, that x prime and a y prime was actually a vector that points in the direction of the solution. It's a tangent vector. So if you have a straight line solution, let's draw a picture of it. If you have a straight line, through the origin, right? And if I draw a tangent to that line right there, what's a tangent to that line look like? It's the same line. Whether Whatever direction it goes in, it doesn't matter, right? But um, it might go this way or it might go this way, right? If I did a direction, if I just do a direction vec unit vector, it'll be length unit one, but it could be any length, right? The tangent vectors are going to point in the same direction as the line, right? So the tangent vector, so this point right here, let's say that it's like, um, I don't know, two, three, that point. Every vector that's tangent to the line is going to point in the same direction as two, three. It's going to be some multiple of 2, 3. Does that make sense? So every vector on a straight line solution is a multiple of the point x, y that you chose. OK. 
Okay, so that's what I put in bold here. In a straight line solution through the origin, the tangent vectors x prime, y prime, they point in the same direction as the straight line solution. So they're always going to be multiples of x, y. Okay. So that means you're looking for vectors x, y, such that x prime, y prime is a multiple for x of x, y. You're just trying to find vectors that make this equation true. So x prime, y prime is some multiple, lambda, some constant multiple of x, y. So if lambda is positive, the vectors are going to point um, away from the origin, and negative, the vectors will point towards the origin. But the, we're looking for these vectors, right? Vectors where the um, that are constant multiples of the point. So in this in this problem, go back to our example, right? We're trying to solve x prime y prime equals lambda y, right? That's the definition of trying to find a straight line solution. And then x prime y prime is defined by this equation. x prime y prime is a times y. That's just your equation for x prime y prime. Okay, so the lambda values that make that equation true are called eigenvalues, and the associated vectors x y that make it true are called eigenvectors. Okay, so a course in linear algebra or a very thorough reading of section 3.2 is pretty long. You might have noticed, right? reveals that when you're solving this equation, ay equals lambda y, which in our example is this equation, right? That's a, that's y, y equals lambda y. Okay. When you're solving that equation, the procedure you use to solve that equation is that you set the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. Okay. And if you took linear year, that should sound familiar, setting the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero to find the eigenvalues. That thing is called the characteristic polynomial. And you solve that characteristic polynomial for lambda, and you get the eigenvalues. Then you use each lambda to find corresponding vectors that lie on a straight line solution. And those are called the eigenvectors. So and that sounds really theoretical. Um, and the theory behind it, you could learn in a linear class, um, but we're just going to put it into practice. Okay, so we're just going to do an example. This is our same example system. And we're going to find the eigenvalues. Okay. So the eigenvalues you find by taking the determinant of a minus lambda i and setting it equal to zero. OK, so that is the determinant of a is your coefficient matrix, 2, 3, 0, negative 4, minus lambda times i. Now, what is the matrix i? The identity matrix, and in a 2 by 2, that is 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. That's called the identity matrix because um, Anytime you multiply something by that matrix, the identity, you get the original thing back. It's like 1 in the multiplication with real numbers. So if you didn't take linear, that's why it's called the identity. We name it i. So I get to set that to 0. Okay. Now I'm just going to simplify what's inside here. I'm going to, when you multiply a matrix by a constant, how does that work? Yep, you multiply every entry in the matrix by the scalar. Yeah. OK, so I'm still working on the determinant. A is 2, 3, 0, negative 4, minus, I'm going to multiply every entry in my matrix, my identity matrix, by lambda. So I get lambda, 0, 0, lambda. Set that equal to 0. And then finally, to add or subtract matrices, you just add or subtract corresponding components. Right, so this is going to be the determinant. I clearly didn't leave enough room to do this. My matrix is going to be 2 minus lambda, 3, negative 4, nope, sorry, 0, and negative 4 minus lambda. I want to set the determinant of that matrix equal to 0. 
And I'm going to go on to another page here. All right, the determinant of a matrix is AD minus BC. So this is going to be 2 minus lambda times negative 4 minus lambda minus 3 times 0. That's how you find the determinant of a 2, two by 2 matrix. Product of these two minus the product of those two. OK, 3 times 0 is just 0, so I'm trying to solve 2 minus lambda times negative 4 minus lambda equals 0. How do I solve that? Yeah, this is a product of two things. The answer is 0. So either 2 minus lambda is 0 or negative 4 minus lambda is 0. And I get lambda equals 2, one solution. And another solution is lambda equals negative 4. All right, so 2 and negative 4 are my eigenvalues. Okay, so that was the eigenvalues. We took the determinant of a minus lambda i, set it equal to 0. It's going to feel very procedural. Um, sometimes it's just not worth going through all the theoretical underpinnings of something. They are in the book. It's readable. Um, and you let me know if you have questions about it. Happy to talk about it. OK, so to find the eigenvectors that are associated with each eigenvalue, we have to go back to solving um, ay equals lambda y, right? So for lambda equals, let's do 2 first. We want to solve ay equals lambda y. And I now know lambda, and I always knew a, right? a is the coefficient matrix 2, 3, 0, negative 4. OK, so I've got 2, 3, 0, negative 4 times some unknown vector x, y. Lambda is 2, x, y. So I need to figure out what kinds of x, y's can make this equation true. What kinds of vectors make this equation true? So on the left, when you multiply this out, it says 2x plus 3y. Right? That's what you get when you dot product the first row with the first column. And when you take the dot product of the second row with the, with the first column, you get negative 4y. And multiply your on the right by the scalar, and you get 2x and 2y. So I actually have a system, two equations, two unknowns. So I have 2x plus 3y equals 2x. And negative 4y has to equal 2y. Um, this is weird. OK, so this is a system that has infinite solutions, right? The only thing that must be true about this is that in both of these equations, y has to be 0 to make these true, right? So any vector um, when you try to solve either of these guys, like if I subtract 2x from both sides here, you get 3y equals 0 only can happen if y is 0, right? Over here, negative 4 times y equals 2 times y. That can only happen if y is 0, right? 
So there, I, when I try to solve either of them, it looks like as long as y is 0, either of those equations will be true. It doesn't matter what x is. Um, so any vector with the y coordinate being 0 will be an associated eigenvector. If you remember from linear, um, there's an infinite number of eigenvectors associated with each eigenvalue. We just have to pick one. So somebody give me any vector, 12, 0. Sure. What would be um, a simpler eigenvector? 1, 0. Sure. Or 1, 0, right? Um, zero, zero is called the, um, the trivial solution. Yeah. Um, so a vector, zero, the vector zero, zero has no length. So it, it doesn't help us draw a straight line solution. All right. So I have to do this exact same procedure with my other eigenvalue, and I ran out of room. So go to another page here. So when lambda equals negative 4, when I try to solve a y equals lambda y, a was 2, 3, 0, negative 4. Lambda is negative 4. Oops, I forgot the y. The vector y is actually two components, x, y. OK, so this says 2x plus 3y is supposed to equal negative 4x. And negative 4y has to equal negative 4y. Hmm? Well, y can be anything, right? In this equation, y could be anything. Negative 4 times that thing equals negative 4 times that thing. All right, so over here, this equation says y can be anything. But let's look at this equation. Um, 6x has to equal 3y. If I divide both sides by 3, y has to equal 2x, right? No, I added 4x to both. Oh, negative 3, yeah. There we go. Thank you. So y has to equal negative 2x. That's my only restriction here. This equation gives me no restrictions. It gives me no information. right? But this says that whatever my vector is, it has to satisfy y equals negative 2x. Right? So give me any vector that's, that satisfies that negative 2 for x. Mm, I think you've got it backwards. I think you're saying x, if x is 1, y is negative 2. Yes? Yeah, yeah. So, so typically, you're, you're, it's not going to give you a single solution. You're going to end up with infinite solutions. So um, typically, one of your equations is going to be worthless. It's not going to help you at all. Um, and then the other one will give you what the restriction is of how x and y have to be related to be an eigenvector. Yeah. yeah. OK, so here's my other eigenvector, 1, negative 2. You also could have picked 2, negative 4. Or um, if you put a, an 18 in for x, you'd put 18, you'd get negative 36. 18, negative 36. That would be another eigenvector. Any, vec any, any point on that line, y equals negative 2x, is an eigenvector. All right, so 1, negative 2 is my other one. So I'm just going to write that over here. No. One negative two. There's my other vector. Okay. Okay, so knowing the eigenvectors, I'm going to draw a sketch of the straight line solution curves, right? That appear on a vector field, and I'm going to mark arrows showing the direction. So here's my axes. 
So the way you get your straight line solution is by taking multiples of any eigenvector, all the constant multiples of one of your eigenvectors. So for lambda equals 2, my eigenvector was 1, 0. So I would plot a vector 1, 0. And then all the constant multiples of that vector form a line. Right? So you just take all the constant multiples. The whole line is a is the straight line solution. Yeah. And the straight line of solution is formed by taking any eigenvalue and just extending it in I'm sorry, any eigenvector and extending it infinitely in both directions in a straight line. All right, lambda was positive for this guy, lambda was two. So you can put arrows on here that point away from the origin. Lambda positive means that the solutions travel away from the origin. All right, and then my other eigenvector is 1, negative 2. Do that one in a different color. So 1, negative 2 is like right there. So I just connect with the origin and I extend that line in both directions. And that corresponded to a negative eigenvalue. Lambda was negative 4 in that case, which means point the solutions towards the origin. Um, I plotted the point 1, negative 2, right here, 1, negative 2. And then I connected that point in the origin and in extended infinitely in both directions. So those are my two straight line solutions. This pink one corresponds to lambda equals 2, and this yellow one corresponds to lambda equals negative 4. And once you have straight line solutions, they're like the guides for all the solutions. Pick an initial value, right? And it's going to sort of approach your straight line solutions. It's going to sort of come down like that, following the arrows on the straight line solutions. If you picked an initial value over here, it would do something like this. So now we're getting to sort of the point of finding straight line solutions. They help you build every other solution. Graphically, they sort of tell you what all the other solutions do. Analytically, each eigenvalue and associated eigenvector can produce a particular solution, like one specific solution to the system of ODEs that has the form e to the lambda t v, where lambda is the eigenvalue and v is the associated eigenvector. So this is just a gift. I'm just telling you this is how it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to write down two particular solutions to this system that we've been working with all class, right? So, um, Y1, my first solution, is going to be E to the lambda TV, and I'm going to do E to the, I'll use my lambda value of 2. So this will be E to the 2T. The vector associated, the eigenvector associated with 2 was 1, 0. There's a solution to my ODE. Right, and I could say this is e to the 2t, 0. Right, just distribute your e to the 2t there. And then another solution I could write down by 2 of t is e to the negative 4t, put in neg the negative 4 for the lambda value, and its associated eigenvector was 1, negative 2. 
So this is e to the negative 4t and negative 2 e to the negative 4t. Amazingly, these are the two particular solutions that I just gave you last class. I gave you those and asked you to confirm that they were solutions, and you did. Right? You can check your notes from yesterday, I mean Monday, that those things are actually solutions. All right, so this is exciting that we can find particular solutions because if you remember from last class, to find the general solution to a linear system, all you need are two particular linearly independent solutions. Okay? And it turns out that finding the straight line solutions is relatively easy, or at least possible. Right? So um, all we need are two particular linearly independent solutions. Yet uh, Monday I gave them to you like magic, and now we can find them analytically and find two straight line solutions. Okay, here's a new system. You can go through practice the whole process.